we're going to be talking with Elizabeth Benskin, who is the Director of School and Teacher Programs at the Baltimore Museum of Art. Elizabeth, we are excited to be talking with you today, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your morning to come and chat with us. I'm very glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So before we talk specifically about the BMA and the programs that you guys have offered there, I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about um, yourself and how you became involved in working in the world of museums. And even before you started working at the BMA, like what your path has been that's led you here. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I, <clears throat> excuse me, came by a, a very circuitous route. Um, I actually started as a religious studies major um, as an undergrad, and my focus was on um, East Asian religious traditions, mostly Buddhism um, and Buddhism in China. And so I actually ended up in a master's program that was interdisciplinary and started to take coursework in the history of Chinese art and history of Japanese art and um, really started to get excited about the sort of visual expression of these ideas that I had found so interesting as a religious studies major and decided that I wanted to do something with art history, but wasn't quite sure. And, but I was also interested in education. So I actually taught in Oakland Public Schools for a year. And um, I really enjoyed that, but it wasn't quite right. And so I was having sort of a Goldilocks situation where I was kind of bouncing around. And I ended up taking an internship at the Freer Gallery of Art and Arthur M. Sackler Gallery, which is are the Asian art galleries at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, DC. And I just, it just clicked. It worked for me. I appreciated being able to sort of use the objects um, to teach about the ideas. And um, that's sort of how I came to be at the BMA. I was at, I was at the Freer and Sackler for about 10 years and then um, and then when an opportunity opened up at the BMA, I thought um, it would be nice to sort of shift and work with a new collection. Yeah. Um, I had just started working with American art when I was at the Freer because the Freer has a, a really wonderful collection of American art, including um, Whistler's Peacock Room. And um, so I decided it was time for like a new learning experience. And so I came to the BMA and I've been here for about six years. Oh, I didn't even realize that you started out in public schools. That's so perfect for our conversation today. I knew you had been with previous museums before, but I didn't realize that you had originated at a public school. So mm -hmm. that's pretty, pretty unique. Um, I'm glad that you have that background because I think it will help like guide our conversation somewhat today. Sure. Uh, our audience is almost entirely educators. So, mm -hmm. um, Follow-up question, what would your advice be for teachers or even some students, we do have, you know, like high school students, older students maybe um, in upper echelons of education who are interested in transitioning into working at a museum, potentially as a museum educator or maybe in an alternate role, maybe as a curator or something else? Sure. So um, in my experience, and this might be because I worked at an Asian art museum, which is a bit of a you know, in the United States is a bit of a niche, you know, sort of since it was primarily Asian art. But um, I found that, you know, museum educators come from a variety of different backgrounds. So I've worked with um, people who are trained as anthropologists, who are trained as architects, artists, teachers, um, ethnomusicologists, um, <clears throat> just a real really wide variety. Um, I think the thing that, that sort of was common amongst everybody was that they all had sort of a passion for helping communicate um, about the artworks, helping bring people together with the, um, the artworks and the ideas that mm -hmm. were being expressed um, and helping people have sort of personal experiences around those. So <clears throat> it, there's, I wouldn't say there's any one path to becoming a museum educator. I, um, there are also museum studies and museum education degree programs now. 
Um, I mean, there have been for quite a while, and, and um, I've worked with people who, who got those degrees and really have a passion for museums as a field. Um, and <clears throat> so there, there are lots of ways of kind of entering the field. It is tight in terms of just the number of positions available. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my advice, and, and I know this is, this is tough, but uh, is, is to try to get an internship or a volunteer position at a museum to really experience working there because I think you can sort of study the theory of it, you know, quite a bit, but museums are hugely complex. Each one's very different. And um, I think that there's nothing like the value of that experience. Now, I also understand that, you know, a lot of internships now are unpaid, which is just a basic barrier for most people. Um, and a lot of museums, including the BMA, are working on remedying that so that there are more opportunities for um, anyone who wants to explore museum professions to, to come in and, you know, have some experience really working kind of behind the scenes or on the floor. Um, so that's, you know, I, my internship was invaluable at the Freer and that's sort of why I emphasize the experience. Yeah. Um, but the, again, there are so many different ways to kind of enter. Um, yeah. I would think if nothing else, the internship would at least allow you to network and to get to know people. And then maybe like there could be some communication between people who are working at museums in terms of we have this intern who's interested in moving into a position, you know, does anyone have anything available? Yeah, and there are also professional associations like the National Art Education Association, which has a museum education division. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I encourage people to <clears throat> take advantage of that if they can. Um, their annual convention is always a really great networking event, and it's usually really fun and inspiring, too. <laughs> um, and then the American Alliance of Museums um, is also another professional association that can be helpful. I'm also, I, this is not part of my formal interview script, but I'm in a, um, a group called like Young Museum Educators in the Baltimore area. And I joined it a while back and it's just been a really interesting resource for me. Um, I'm not a museum educator, but I do a lot of work with museums and also with um, teachers in public school systems. So anyway, there are Facebook groups out there as well, I know. Okay, yes, so yes. I also want to... Um, be really mindful of your time. So I wanna talk for a few minutes about the BMA specifically and mm -hmm. some of the programs that you guys are offering at Baltimore Museum of Art. I know you offer student group tours and mm -hmm. also some teacher workshops, as well as some online resources. I was just wondering if you can elaborate for teachers who might live in the Maryland area about some of the programs that you guys regularly offer. Sure. Um... And I'll try to remember all of them. <laughs> but you don't need to remember can, everything. You can do highlights. Yeah, so I'll do highlights, and then um, if we can send you know listeners a, a link. Yeah. Um, then that would, um, I think that would connect people with with what we have. But um, yes, so and probably at the at the outset, I should probably say that the BMA is free. So if teachers are interested in coming on their own or bringing a group of students, their individual entrance and the group tours are free. So <clears throat> we offer one-time school tours, um, a variety of them. They range from highlights, um, sort of cross-collection kind of sampling, to um, tours of our special exhibitions, to uh, thematic tours like stories and art. Mm -hmm. And um, those are generally about an hour and they're led by our volunteer docents. Um, we also have specific partnership programs with Baltimore City Public Schools and Baltimore County Public Schools. So for teachers who are in those districts, um, in Baltimore City, we have Close Encounters, which is a multiple visit program for fourth grade students. Um, this year we've worked with or are working with 30 classes. Um, and That's that awesome. program, yeah, it's, it's been going since 1982. It's a very long-standing program, um, and it, 
um, it starts with a docent going into the classroom for kind of orientation with the students and then they come to the museum for uh, three thematic tours and then finally for a studio art making visit. So um, applications for that go out in the spring. So if there are any Baltimore City teachers who are interested in having their fourth grade class participate, um, please let us know. Yeah, that's yes. perfect. <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's a great program. And we also have, we're also part of a sort of optional curriculum for Baltimore County Public Schools, the Developing Language and Literacy Through the Arts, um, where it's about a six week curriculum where teachers work with students um, focused on artworks from the BMA um, as a way of kind of developing their, their language skills um, and we do it for pre-K and K, so the, the culminating activity is they come to the museum to actually see the artworks and talk about them together. Um, it's a lot of fun and, and they're very excited once they see them in person. Yeah, is that curriculum available for all the Baltimore County teachers? It is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I believe you could contact uh, Sherry Fisher um, if you're interested in getting uh, a copy of the, of the curriculum. Cool. Well, that should be, maybe we can like, I don't know, link it in the show notes or something. That's a really unique uh, thing to be offering. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so the other thing that we have going right now, and this is just a pilot program for the moment, but we're hoping to expand it eventually is we're doing an art, mindfulness and peace building program with a Baltimore City Public School fifth grade. And we're partnering with um, Beyond Conflict, which is an international peace building organization and um, Holistic Life Foundation, which is an organization that offers sort of mindfulness, um, meditation and yoga practices to Baltimore City schools and communities. Um, so we are, we're sort of testing that and evaluating it and, and might expand it. Um, then in terms of what we offer teachers, we have teacher workshops that we typically offer um, for each major exhibition or reopening of an installation. Uh, we have one coming up on April 28th on the Jack Whitten exhibition that we have. Um, and those are typically- you have to sign up in advance online to participate or- Yes, okay. so um, there are application materials online and you can just register using those. Um, <clears throat> and those are typically experiences where teachers have sort of privileged access to the exhibition um, and get a you know, sort of special tour of it, have an art making activity and um, sort of discuss ways of connecting what they've seen in the exhibition to their classroom curriculum. Oh, that sounds amazing and very up our alley in terms of arts integration. Mm -hmm. So are you part of, this is also not a scripted question, but I, I'm just curious, are you part of developing those activities that the teachers are doing in those specialized programs in terms of making connections between the art you guys are carrying in your exhibitions and making classroom links? Are you helping to create like or foster, I guess, the teacher experience with that or? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so um, typically I do some of the direct teaching or um, my colleague who's the manager of school and teacher programs will do some of the direct teaching and, you know, with materials that we've developed. We sometimes um, bring in teaching artists. Um, so, you know, for more studio focused, um, activities, you know, we might bring in somebody who has specific expertise. So for instance, yeah. in the Matisse Stephen Korn exhibition, we brought in someone who's more of sort of a color specialist because color was such an important aspect of that exhibition. Amen saw that exhibition. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So also to open it up, we have kind of a wide audience, people in all different states and countries. So for teachers who maybe live a little farther away, who might not be able to travel to the BMA, how would you recommend that they connect with their own local art museums and communities? So I, you know, in the DC and Baltimore area, 
we're really fortunate to have so many free museums. Mm -hmm. um, and so I understand, you know, that on a national and international level, you know, that's not frequently the case. Um, what I would say for teachers is that you should check to see if, if regardless of their, if there's an entrance fee, whether the, the museum itself offers free school tours mm -hmm. um, or other school experiences, because frequently they do. Um, so I would check to see that. I would look to see if there are professional development opportunities there. If they're doing it right, they should be like personally inspiring, but also professionally helpful. Um, <clears throat> they, and they should also check, you know, and this is not limited to their own local museums, but just um, digitally, museums are putting so much more content online, um, lots of lesson plans. In fact, you know, we have an e-resource that goes out, you know, every eight, eight times a year during the school year. So every month during this sort of most of the school year. And um, we also have lots of sort of robust teacher resources online with lots of in-depth information and images and lesson plans. And lots of museums have those and they're downloadable for free. So if people have, um, you know, the, that digital access, then they can look up, you know, uh, worldwide for, for resources. Yeah, I think a lot of times too, I know museums will have certain exhibitions online, like digitally available. So if you're not able to make it to the museum in person, you can utilize the online resource instead and show the images to your classroom that way. Exactly. Yeah. So there are lots of different ways of bringing the artworks and the information into the classroom. Okay, so before you go, I was wondering if you could tell us about any exciting current or upcoming exhibitions happening at the VMA. Sure, so we have, I'll give you my three faves. Okay. Um, the first is um, Spencer Finch Moondust, which is going to be installed in our um, Fox Court, which is where American Wing is and where historic entrance is. It's, um, it's opening on February 21st. And it's a translation of the chemical composition of moon of actual moon dust um, from one of the collected on one of the Apollo missions into a light installation. What? That's so, so cool. Yeah. So it's really it's a really going to be a really amazing exhibition. It's also a fantastic steam yes. um, uh, connection. So yeah, it sounds like chemistry, visual art. I don't know, light. Um, I'm sure that's another unit in science. Yeah, astronomy. Yeah, um, a lot of bases there. So um, the next I would recommend is um, uh, Stephen Towns' "Rumination and a Reckoning," which is actually a quilt show um, by a local artist, Stephen Towns, and it's these quilts are really exquisite, and it has a um, <clears throat> an entire series on the Nat Turner Rebellion. Um, so again, there's a, an interesting history connection for any teachers who want to do an arts integration um, sort of focus around that. Literacy. Um, and like, I see a lot of like paper quilting in terms of like bringing things to a classroom, like when you have limited materials, like mm -hmm. ways that you could utilize construction paper and glue and things that most classrooms commonly have. That sounds really cool. Right. Yeah. And I love that, yeah, that connection between like quilting and collage so that, yes, when you don't have these, you know, the time or the expensive materials to make the, the quilts or just the material, you know, the sort of mm -hmm. all the sewing skills, which are really um, quite intense. And then finally, um, we have a major exhibition coming to our Tallheimer um, Gallery, um, Odyssey, Jack Whitten Sculpture, 1963 to 2016. Wow. So this is, um, this is a show focused on the work of Jack Whitten, most of which he um, did. He's an African-American artist um, and who's sort of known for modernist paintings, but he um, went to Crete and for 40 years um, worked on a body of work of sculpture, which has never been seen before. So this is an exhibition that we've co-organized with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And um, it shows some of his paintings, which are really, truly beautiful, but also this interesting sculptural work that's um, 
both sort of takes inspiration from African sculpture as well as Aegean art. Um, so that, I highly recommend that. That's opening on April 22nd. It is a paid ticketed exhibition, but school tours for it are free. Insider um, tip. <laughs> insider tip. And um, <laughs> it's, it's a rare opportunity also because Jack just died about two weeks ago. So this is um, yeah, the last commemorative. Right. Exhibition, you know, um, we have an audio guide, you know, with his own commentary. So it's really kind of an extraordinary opportunity, as sad as it is, you know, with his passing yeah. to um, really explore the work um, that he created. Kind so, of amazing too, like, I'm sure that in the, the days leading up to creating this exhibition, he must have been really proud of, you know, the culmination of this work that's been happening since you said 1963, right? So, definitely. Right. Yeah, I mean, I didn't personally meet him, but my colleagues, some of my colleagues did, and they said he was very excited, which is really nice to know. Yeah. Um, and so we're, there's actually an opening day event, like a community event on April 22nd. So um, that's open and free to the public as well. Great. Um, and yeah, we hope that people, you know, will take the opportunity and, and come to see this exhibition, which I think is really special. Yeah, I will check on your website or maybe you can email me some links and we can link the upcoming exhibition in the show notes so that if listeners are interested in attending, they can just um, click through to the different pages on the website. If you have anything available regarding upcoming um, exhibitions, also student teacher programs, things like that, we'll try and put as much as we can in the show notes with links so that um, our audience can click through and find all the awesome stuff you were just talking about. Great. Yeah, so thank you so much for chatting with us today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, and I know this will be really beneficial to our educator audience. I really appreciate you uh, chatting with us today. Thanks for inviting me. It was, it was a lot of fun and I hope that we can connect with some of your audience members. Yeah, I hope so too. I think that would be a great connection. Okay, well have a great day. All right, you too. Okay, bye-bye. Looking to add more creativity to your classroom? Excited by the idea of arts integration, STEAM, and project-based learning, but not sure how to fit it into your busy curriculum? Try an online class from Education Closet. You'll receive a 10-hour PD certificate for each class that you complete. Each training is self-paced, includes lifetime access, and takes place in a modern video-based platform. You can use it on any device, you can learn anything from how to build a STEAM program to classroom management for hands-on learning experiences. It's your year to thrive, teachers. Visit educationcloset.com forward slash courses for more information and to get started today.